Hey kid, do you want to watch a sequel to a really cool movie? Yeah? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Too bad this one is doo-doo. No! Expect diminishing returns. You ready to talk some movies, Brennan? Yeah, okay. Well, let's go! Welcome to the Corrupted Youth Podcast. I'm Dan. I'm Brennan. And we're a father and son duo that explores the latest blockbusters, classic genre films, and the schlockiest of Golden Age VHS rental store flicks. In what fashion? Spoiler heavy fashion. Whoa. How's it going, Bren? It's going all right. It's been a been a while since we've done this. Mm -hmm. This episode's kind of been like Pee Wee and the Snakes for us. (laughs) 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 Sorry, this is a little late dongles, but... If you've seen this movie, you you know why. Yeah, we're not even going to beat around the bush on this one. Mm-mm. No way. Um, and some better news, though. We have a brand spanking new t-shirt up on our Public store. It's pretty cool. Yep. It's very cool. So wherever you are listening from, you've probably seen that our logo has changed to a cool space demon design. So I'll even link in the notes. Head on over to our Public store. Grab yourself one. We'll make a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably on sale. <laughs> so yes, in case you're completely oblivious to titles and everything like that, we're covering Escape from L.A., the sequel to... A es- really good movie. <laughs> <laughs> Escape from New York. Now, for a long time, Brennan was forbidden to watch this movie. Mm-hmm. He was, or I should say, you you are an Escape from New York fan. Yes. You once cosplayed as Snake Plissken. Yep, that was great. That was awesome. Uh, you were much, much smaller then, mm-hmm. which made it even better. Yeah, that was pretty funny. A lot of people really liked that costume, too. This movie almost ruined Escape from New York for me. <laughs> that's, that's hard, too. <laughs> yeah, after I watched it, I was kind of in disbelief, so I decided to watch it one more time. <laughs> and then uh, so much with this movie just... Wow. Uh, well, maybe I'll save some of my thoughts for later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is a rare opportunity where your mom actually watched this movie. Yes. We watched it uh, back when it came out on home video back in the 90s. What's a home video? <laughs> well, soon that's all you're going to get. Movie theaters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they got, they've got vines and stuff growing on them. Yeah. The one near our house, I think, uh, was built just a couple of years ago. It's completely collapsed. It's been overrun with apes. Just crazy. Ever seen the opening to 2001? <laughs> Space Odyssey? That's that's our theater. <laughs> but yeah, so we watched this with Schmed. And if you don't recall him, let's check out the episode we did with him on... Wait. Wait. <laughs> it's been such a long time wait you didn't know there was going to be a quiz oh yeah yeah um he's currently yelling at the podcast wait no i should know this i should know it was really fun how am i forgetting that you're gonna say it and i'm gonna hate myself for it. no i'm gonna wait for you to say it <laughs> okay okay i gotta think i gotta think okay i'm gonna drink beer it was your pick oh it was uh, uh, until dawn. Wait, no, it's from dusk till dawn. Correct. <laughs> oh, it took me a while. If you're wondering if that slapping noise is heard, our uh, our studio Dongle Den One <laughs> recently recently under uh, underwent some changes. Uh, the futon that's normally in here got moved to the bedroom that. My daughter, Neve, she moved out, so now it's in there. I'm sitting on a dining room chair. <laughs> it looks like you're being interrogated. Yeah, I bet. I should turn on the overhead light and just shine <laughs> it on your face. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure our viewers would love to see that. <laughs> Maybe I'll make it the picture of this episode. <laughs> I'm surprised I don't have to tie you down just to get you to do this one. 
surprised you don't have to tie me down to have me watch it. But yeah, anyways, so back to my story. Your mom watched this with Schmutt and I, and I really wanted her to watch Escape from New York first. Of course. But she insisted on watching it with us. She's like, well, I'll just go watch that one. This movie wrecked her so bad, she refuses to ever watch Escape from New York. I don't blame her. You know, if this is the first thing you've seen of this series, this duology. So fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a trailer for this. Are you ready to listen to this trailer in real time, Brian? Listen to it right now? Right here? Yeah. Or will we, like, actually listen to it right now? You bet. Welcome to the theater. For everyone's enjoyment, we'd like to remind you of the following rules. No talking. No smoking. No littering. No red meat. No freedom of religion. And remember, all marriages must be approved by the Department of Health. Failure to obey these rules will result in immediate loss of citizenship and deportation to the island of Los Angeles. Enjoy the show. Your rules are really beginning to annoy me. He ah! read a psycho profile on him using a database of five million sociopathic personalities. He hit the bottom of the curve. Catches on quick, doesn't she? This town loves a winner. Say we play a little Bangkok rules. Nobody draws until this hits the ground. You ready? Draw. You got a problem with that? And we're back. That was a really cool trailer, wasn't it? Sure was. I love that part. <laughs> Actually, the trailer <laughs> makes it seem like this movie might be pretty decent. Oh. Well, I guess since this was my pick. It's all on you. It is on me. I gotta do the rundown. Well, actually, first, let's do some IMDb stuff. So, Escape from L.A., 1996, according to IMDb. Snake Plissken is, once again, called in by the United States government to recover a potential doomsday device from Los Angeles. Now, an autonomous island where undesirables are deported. It is directed by John Carpenter. It was written by John Carpenter, Deborah Hill, and Kurt Russell. <laughs> so it stars Kurt Russell, Steve Buscemi, Peter Fonda, and uh, let's see who else is in here. Stacy Keach, Pam Greer is in here, Bruce Campbell. Good actors. Yeah, there was, there was quite a few. Yes, that does not always make for a good movie, though. It has a good cast. It does. Why wouldn't this succeed? And it's directed by John Carpenter, too. Yes, but here's my beef. This is kind of like a period of time where I was not liking what John Carpenter was making. Well, I don't blame you because this one was pretty bad. Oh so yeah, the rundown. This movie starts off, you got to do a lot of catching up to this world because a lot has happened since Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. Apparently in 1998, the United States Police Force was formed. That's always good. Yikes. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 2020 eyes, this is not looking so good. In the year 2000... An earthquake ruins L.A. and turns the cesspool city into an island after the valley floods. The president alters the constitution, so he has a lifetime term. Double yikes. Ugh. I'm not liking this. <laughs> uh, the president then implements uh, something called Directive 17. It says undesirables will lose their citizenship and be deported to the island of Los Angeles. Uh, he's got his, this thing that the, he calls his new moral America and has rules that are like no smoking, no red meat, no sex before marriage, no freedom of religion, which means that you have to be like good Christian, no drinking, no drugs, no guns. It's only missing rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> if you're deported, you have the option to go to the electric chair instead when, <laughs> once you're being deported. And uh, the new coast it has a giant wall. I wonder who paid for it. To make sure that they cannot get back to the mainland. And that's a triple hex for me. Yeah. I've, uh, I'm looking down at my paper right now. I've checked too many boxes. <laughs> yes. So now in the movie... The, cur the, the current time in the movie, 
is 2013. It's been 16 years since Escape from New York. Snake Plissken, he's been captured in New Vegas, Thailand. He was nearly captured in some incident that occurred in Cleveland. It gets mentioned so much in this movie, I think I'd rather see that movie yeah, instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's also cool that Snake Plissken, he's wearing the same outfit, mm-hmm. but why would he be wearing that same outfit for 16 years? Because uh, it looks cool? Uh, yeah, it does. Dude, I wore it. You know, it was pretty cool. But yeah, and you know what? I'm a little bit out of shape, and I'd probably still wear it. You answered my question of why would he? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So the president's daughter, her name is Utopia. Uh, she's gone rogue, and she's taken this MacGuffin remote that controls a ring of weaponized satellites armed with EMP devices, uh, and it uses like a mini command CD that goes inside the remote. Because it's the 90s. Yep. After they investigated, after they investigated, they've discovered she's been in contact with this guy named Cuervo Jones, who lives on the island of LA, and he's like the biggest gang leader there, and he wants to use the remote as leverage to get off the island. They've already had, they've already sent one guy in, and they haven't heard from him, and since they've just recently captured Snake Plissken, they're like, yes, let's send him in. Apparently he's been through some type of crappy deal like this before, and he does not seem too happy about it. No. I do like this beginning part where they're bringing him in. You yeah. Know, the plan. This, this opening was actually pretty good. I mean, the setup is pretty strong. I don't mind that it repeats kind of the same themes. I don't mind that. It's kind of funny in a way that, you know, like maybe he just keeps getting captured and has to do these dumb missions. Yeah. But, I mean, in this world, he is supposed to be the best. Yeah. And so, yeah, they send him to get the uh, the device. But the thing is, the president wants his daughter killed. And then the, so the command center, the commander there, I don't remember the character's name, played by Stacy Keach. He just calls Snake Plissken hotshot way too much. Mm-hmm. I did keep a total of things at the end. And even though I've, I watched this movie twice, which I still have diarrhea. That's three times too many. <laughs> just for this podcast. Um. I did not feel like taking the total of how many times he says hot shot the second time around. I was like, no, can't do it. Yeah. No. You know, speaking of his outfit, Snake, he gets a cool style suit. Um, apparently, they that fabric that it's made out of, they invented a new fabric to make that in real life, which it doesn't really... No, it just looks... doesn't look special. No, it doesn't. It looks like it's made out of parachute pants. Yeah. <laughs> um, he gets a one-time use hologram projector. He gets a big clunky gun. He gets a knockout mouth dart, uh, regular sticks of matches, and he demands to get his own guns back, which he does get. And he was also given uh, this man-made Plutoxin-7 virus while entering the facility. So he only has, what, 10 hours to live? Something like that. I think it's and five. He, and he, I think it's 10. Yes, it is. I didn't care. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it is 10 because at one point I remember watching and he looks at, because he gets a new countdown bracer. And it said seven hours, and I was like, that took him three hours Oh, <laughs> to get this far. I'm like, eh, no, looking so good. But yeah, if he completes the mission in time, they will give him the antidote. Spoiler alert. There's no, it's not real. It's not real. But it's a good motivator, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, during this whole sequence where they're getting ready to ship him out, and he gets all his stuff, there's way too many gags about him wanting to shoot them. I did. I thought it was kind of funny. It was funny the first time. Yeah. The second time I was like, okay, come on now. Because the first time I was like, haha, we're holograms, sucker. Yeah. So that would that's a good setup for later in the movie when he actually uses the projector. Mm-hmm. But the second time they loaded his first clip with planks. Yeah. I, I thought that was actually, it was kind of clever. He goes, is this thing loaded? And then he goes, good, and shoots them all. I, <laughs> I like that. I thought they were just going to pull the hologram gig again, but it, I... I I would have liked if he just reloaded a normal clip in and then shot him. <laughs> I feel like that's what he would have done in that situation. They would have let him get away with it, too. Yeah. So in order for him to get to the island, instead of a hang glider, like an escape from New York this time, he's got a one-man nuclear-powered sub, which none of this part makes sense, because they're nope. like, you have to go in, you have to go in at like a certain velocity, otherwise you're going to overheat the system. Yeah. Or something like that. So they give him some boundaries. And there's lots of obstacles down there because part of it's just like sunken city stuff. And he's like, 
No way. I'm just going to go super fast. I'm not going to listen to your rules. And what does he do? He ends up crashing the sub like a dongle. It kind of, it's kind of like a theme in this movie. It feels like Snake is just constantly out of his element and just not doing anything right. <laughs> I feel like he's always just getting like beat up or doing something dumb and getting himself caught or not listening to very simple directions. There's a, well, like I said, there's a little too much of just disobeying the rules just to do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work out well for him here because that's his ticket out. Yeah. So now that he's there, he's kind of hosed because he doesn't have a ride because he ends up like launching it up <laughs> on like some cliff and then it like falls back into the water. It's dumb. Yeah, it's super dumb. But when that happens, uh, some surfer dudes are down in the water and they see him. But then there's like another guy wearing a poncho who instantly recognizes him. I mean, I guess he would be reasonably famous. Yeah, especially by this time, yeah. I mean, he did save a president already. Uh-huh. But at the same time, it's a running theme in this movie where everybody's like, Whoa, Snake Pluskin, I thought you were dead. Yeah. What are you doing here? I thought you were dead. When I was cosplaying as Snake Pluskin, a lot of people said that to me. <laughs> Snake Pluskin, I thought you were dead. And I just looked at him, I said, I didn't watch Escape from L.A. And they said, good. And, you know, they'd always be like, oh, good. Don't, it's bad. That kind of happened in Escape from New York, but it wasn't as it bad. It wasn't as bad, no. No. So yeah, the surfer dude that spots him, um, his name is Pipeline. Because, <laughs> you know, surfing. Yeah, so this the surfer guy Pipeline is played by Peter Fonda, who you probably don't know him or recognize him from much. I mean, he's got this reputation for being a counterculture icon oh. from the movie Easy Rider. But honestly, like anytime I see him and stuff, and this might this might make some dongles not happy with me, but I don't think he's a good actor. And he's certainly not good in this. This is also gonna happen throughout this movie. Snake Pliskin runs into somebody, and the entire movie comes to a screeching halt. Uh-huh. And then he has to move on, and the whole thing plays like a children's book. And then Snake Pliskin is frolicking through the fields of LA when he happens to stumble upon a lonely wanderer. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little, little sneaky plisky bear just bounding through L.A. What kind of kooky adventure is he going to go on? So he goes to this snake after running into the pipeline. Uh, he goes to this like village area, occupied part of town, you know, and it seems like, oh, it's a bunch of riffraff, which seems pretty cool. Yeah. And he ends up, uh, he spots Utopia and Cuervo Jones right away. Because they are driving like this super big land yacht with a disco ball on it. Mm -hmm. And so he spots them right away in uh, this village. And this is like right after he finds out the previous guy was like, they're using them. They're just like throwing knives at him. Yeah. Which I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> and, um, so then they kind of like, what it was it? They recognized him or they realized that he's like chasing after him or whatever. So it just results in this like really boring chase scene. Yeah. Where, like, nobody's really seems like they're even driving all that fast. No. And, like, every kind of chase scene in this movie, it, like, doesn't matter. Like, you could be drive far enough ahead where you probably wouldn't be able to see what's going on. But every time, people just turn around and it's like they're watching it right there. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's very true. It's, like, a weird, it's a, just weird. But, um... Yeah, like, he takes, like, this jump on the motorcycle, and it's, like, really kind of bad effect of him landing in the bed of a truck. Uh-huh. And it's just like, ooh, okay, that's kind of what you're getting into. And, like, during this whole chase sequence, he loses his big dumb gun that they gave him. And his jacket. Oh, yeah, his jacket, like, after he, like, wipes out and stuff. And this is where you also have, like, the Bangkok rules standoff sequence that's in the trailer i did like that part actually it's kind of corny but i do like it because it feels very western like it's a western because that's kind of how his character is yeah you know just kind of like this outlaw um speaking of snake Bliskin, though i do like the character i like him he's a man of very few words i like it when he talks at a normal speaking level and doesn't whisper every single line that he says <laughs> he, yeah he hams it up in this movie Mm-hmm. Because there's plenty of times where he could just talk normal. Yeah. Like, just talk normal, Snake. Just for just for once. But no, he has to talk like this. Yeah. I'm Snake. Call me Snake. 
What? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but uh, it's really noisy around here. There's like music playing and <laughs> people are shooting guns and stuff. Everyone probably just hears. <laughs> but I do. I live like right after this whole thing. He acts all bummed out and just goes and kicks a, kicks a chair over so he can sit down on it. And he just decides like, that nah, fudge it. I'm just going to sit here now. Like, dude, you have a ticking clock. Yeah, you're going to die. Sure, it doesn't look good for you right now. But come on. You'll figure this out. This is where he runs into Steve Buscemi's character, Map to the Stars Eddie, who is clearly shifty from the get-go. Yeah. He offers uh, his... He's like, hey, Snake, you want to take my remote my remote control tour of LA? And it's like, oh, look, he has a remote. Everybody's remote looks exactly the same. Wow. I wonder if that'll be used in a bait and switch later at the end of the movie. Yeah, but apparently everybody's got one of these things. And you know what? I get they were going with the technology of the day, but they really missed out on calling cell phones ahead of time. This could be like a smartphone scenario. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, apparently every normal person had one at that time. And, I mean, I don't know. It's just a bunch of numbers on a big clunky box that you can stick a disc in and punch codes into and it does stuff. And also, everyone has the same one. Even a military-grade one that controls the doomsday device is just the normal consumer-grade. It's, that's, it's not good world-building. Yeah. You can't have, I mean, maybe in this society, you can run a monopoly for your business, but... Not by today's standards. No, you have to allow competition. <laughs> yeah, Snake turns down the tour, and it's like, but you're going to see this shifty guy later. Oh, he even does like a, hey, you're Snake Pliskin. Yeah. <laughs> so Snake ends up like, he's sneaking around on his journey, and he sees like some weird monk guys or something, so he hides in some bushes, and there's just a woman there. Yeah. <laughs> this is like, hey, my, my, it's my bush. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, they don't do a very good job because they get captured right away by these cloaked figures and they're taken to the Beverly Hills Hospital where apparently it's uh run by people who are super into plastic surgery and like to harvest body parts from other people to feed their addiction, plastic surgery. It's cool. And augmentation. Which, this part is cool, it's creepy. Yeah, I like this part. The Surgeon General. Yeah, and it's, that's played by Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. And it's just very off, like, all the makeup is, and stuff looks very much plastic surgery overload. Yeah. And I kind of like this, and I thought it was cool. I mean, this is still one of my favorite parts of the movie. Yeah. Okay. I, I wake up for a second, I go, oh, something's happening? <laughs> Yeah, but it's like two minutes long. It doesn't last very long. That's yeah. the, the main problem with this. Like this movie just has ideas and it wants to like snap. Let's get to the next part because we're just trying to cram too many ideas in. But we're also stopping the movie every time Snake Plissken runs into somebody because like right now he's like tied up. He's taken captive. He can't do anything. So nothing's really happening. I mean, yes, it adds the atmosphere and stuff, but he just ends up using that blow dart. Yeah. And shoots Bruce Campbell in the head with it, who is doing some of the worst fake I'm drugged up acting I've ever seen. <laughs> but it's kind of disappointing. Like, come on. He's just kind of like, he looks bored. <laughs> he just looks like, oh, now I'm bored. I got hit with the, the bored dart. But yeah, so he uses him as like a human shield so they can escape. And they hop in the, in the sewer and just have dialogue as they're walking then he's like well okay i'm gonna go solo and they just leave the sewer and then a minute later she just sneaks up on him again yeah why not have her meet up with him later she's only there to explain she's a muslim woman yeah and she was sent there because she had a different religion which yes that is terrible yeah she should not be persecuted for that that's her only crime. That's bad. But then they just unceremoniously kill she her. She gets shot randomly. It's so out of the blue. Yeah, because he just runs into some other people, and it's like, 
like little kid gang members or something. Yeah, and those they never come back either. No, they, they just they just drive off in like a hot rod, some some hot rod classic car with flames yeah. on it. Uh, those those kids were interesting too. I wanted to know more about them. Yeah, I think they were kind of in the beginning part too, when he first got to the island. That's where you kind of knew where to go. Oh, because there's like two cars slowly yeah. chasing each other and shooting at each yeah, other. Yeah, but I just mean like I wish they had you know delved more into that. Yeah, what about kid gangs? I mean, maybe they're part of... Either way, it's cool. Cuervo's gang. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, she just randomly gets shot, and then she's just dead. Mm -hmm. So then he's solo again. It's so weird. And that's when Map to the Stars Eddie shows up, just like you knew he would. And he's like... And he shows up, and he's like, Hey, Snake, do you need a ride? I feel like I always have to talk stupid like him. <laughs> like, hey, come on, Snake. Hey, you want a ride? I got... I got Quervo's car. He lets me borrow it sometimes. So Snake's like, sure, I'll get in your car and ride with you. But then, oh, the glove box has knockout darts in it. And then Snake's all drugged up. And things go black and white and weird. Ooh. That part was so dumb. It was bad. It was really bad. It was very 90s. Uh, I did not, yeah. I did not care for that effect. No, that it was, was really like, dumb. It was cheesy, but... It gets Snake where he wants to be because he wakes up at Quervo's and that's where we get, he gives the lowdown on his plan. I mentioned it in the beginning about how he wants to use the device so he can get off the island, get his freedom. And in order to do this, he makes a broadcast, which uh, they're watching back at the command center and the president's there and stuff, which they keep bouncing back to that too. I don't even bring it up I, in because my it's notes not important. because it just keeps happening and it's almost like they just comment on things there's like wow he's there yep sorry snake however we can't help you because you lost your stuff yeah which was weird that he even made that call anyway <laughs> the one thing i do like about this broadcast is that like the president is <laughs> he goes look snake Pliskin's live because they thought he was dead and it's just him in the background <laughs> yeah. zip tied to the treadmill yeah that part was i, I like that <laughs> That would be terrible, though, just to be put on a treadmill and having being forced to walk endlessly. Yeah. Well, let's take a break, and we'll listen to a promo from another podcast. Hello, this is the Doom Show. Keep on keeping on and keep on trucking, America. We don't listen to our feedback because we don't get any. <laughs> <laughs> the truth hurts. I just alienated the two people that give us constant feedback. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's gotta go. <laughs> That's gotta go in there. So on the show... Uh, we talk about giallo movies and slasher movies and cult movies. Sometimes we even talk about Cameron Mitchell and his movies. I am Richard. Who are you? I am Brad, the guy that's not Richard or Jeffrey or Simon. That's right. We have four people and we always talk at once except to each other. Jeffrey lives up north. Simon lives across the world. Richard lives in Penis, Alabama. Hello, This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Check out the other shows on legionpodcast.com. You can check out more Hello, This is the Doom Show at hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or at doommoviethon.com. Check for our Amazon exclusive Hello, This is the Doom Show cookbook. Do you like hot dogs? <laughs> we got them. Do you like mac and cheese? We got it. Do you like cheddar? We have it. Actually, we don't. No, no cheddar. Just Colby. Colby Jack. Hello, this is the Doom Show. We never gave up on you because you never gave up on us. Wow. So after this broadcast thing, they take Snake to this empty football stadium where there's a basketball court too. And Snake has to play basketball to save his life. If he can make 10 points within 10 seconds, full court, has to go from one basket to the other. He lives. And no he, one's done it. No one's done it. No one succeeded him, ever. But he does it. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Because otherwise the movie would just end there. But uh, the interesting thing about that, though, is that Kurt Russell did make all those shots. He obviously did not do the full challenge. But he did insist that for authenticity, he would make all those shots. Wow. I'm really glad that, that you know, this movie would be bad if, he, if they had faked that. I would not like this movie if they had faked those <laughs> But yeah, that's the most interesting part about this sequence because it's so cheesy and dumb. Yeah. It's so dumb. Yet again, it slows the movie down. 
they have to have sequences of him doing this in slow motion. They just drag. And it doesn't even matter because then right after that, like, yeah. he just gets shot at by Cuervo. Yeah, Cuervo just pulls out a... Sniper. Big, yeah, a big sniper rifle and is like, well, ah, I'm going to kill him anyway. And Utopia is like, well, what are you doing? You shouldn't just shoot him. That's not fair. Mm-hmm. Wow, in a lawless land. Go figure. Yeah. But yeah, this is the first Deus Ex earthquake because it saves the day because the earthquake happens. And then everybody's like, whoa, earthquake, let's get out of here. So then Snake's able to just escape into a sewer. I like the way you're looking at me right now. You're just like, so, it, there's just so much to this movie. Because I'm yeah. thinking ahead, like, what happens next? And I know that it's just more of nothing. I feel like if you were to press fast forward by, like, five minutes in this movie, you'd either be in the exact same location doing the exact same thing, just slowly, or you'd be in a completely new location the dumb character hearing all their backstory. Right. I mean, well, I was going to say, though, like, the look on your face is... Even though you've seen this movie, hearing me say it to you, either you're really you're reliving it, or it's just not you're just good. Un, you're just like, what? How are they it's, doing this? And, and then and then they and then Snake is and then and then he. Oh, this is definitely an and then movie. And then it is, yeah, it's all it is. And, and then, then and then they're outside, and then there's the cars, and then he blows up a car, and then then he's in the <laughs> sewer, and then Steve Buscemi shoots, and then he. <laughs> Okay. Hey, my notes are way slower than what you're running through, but it, and I'm trying to like just get through this fast too. Even sorry, dongles, if you really wanted us to explore this and get deep about it, but it's so end of then. I just want to get to the end. Is that so wrong? Feel free to make a comment in the in the dongle den or on Facebook or email us anywhere. <laughs> I feel like there's but also like there's like. Nothing that happens. There's no like revelations about like the characters or yeah. or anything. I mean, I don't need Snake Plissken to be have layers or anything. No. I just want him to be cool, which he does in this movie. But it's everything around him, all the actions and consequences. Just it, it's just so cobbled together. It's mind boggling. You could literally take out sections and like just swap it with other ones. I mean, I had heard that they didn't. I don't know if it was this version that they wrote or if they rewrote the version from before, but I know Kurt Russell really wanted to do this movie because he really likes the character of Snake Plissken because he enjoys playing him, which, yeah, you would. And at some point in time, they got together and they just yucked it up. But I know there was a version of this that John Carpenter didn't even want to direct when it may be this version because he thought it was too campy. Yeah, this whole movie's campy. Mm Mm-hmm. Even the plastic surgery scene that I like, it's cheesy. It's still campy. Yeah. I think back to the original, you know, yeah, it had its campy moments, but otherwise it was like... It was bizarre. It was over the top. You go into this place and it's... New York was just bonkers. Uh Uh-huh. So yeah, it just gets you into that world. And you're just doing more of the same here, but just not as well. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Amp it up. More action or something. The action... It's like more action, but while the action's happening, it needs to be faster. It needs to make more sense, you it's know? It's all slow. It's so slow. Like the part where Cuervo just starts sniping Snake. It's like, well, I guess. Like there's no real meaning. You know that he's just going to get away. There's no stakes. There's no tension in any of the combat. Yeah, I mean, you have this ticking clock, but it doesn't seem to matter. Because yeah. the movie just stops. It's so slow. And he, he looks at it on occasion. And yes, time has passed. Or around this point, like, so now we'll just finish off where we're at. Because he goes down in the sewer, and this is where he starts coughing. So he's, like, physically getting sick. Yeah. And so, yeah, little things like that. I mean, that's a nice touch, but maybe he should have been kind of doing that earlier. But I can't imagine, too, like, why would you give somebody, give like, you have 10 hours, but also at the same time, about halfway through, you're going to just get super sick. Yeah. So you're not going to want to do anything. He gets into this the sewer, and Utopia follows him down there. She's got the, the MacGuffin in the box, and this is where she finds out, like, Snake is supposed to kill her. By her own, her own dad said, yeah, go for it. And 
he just kind of lets her go because, I mean, he does still kind of have morals, even though he's, you know, he's a good anti-hero that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, this all happens just in time for Eddie to come down and takes a, takes a shot at Snake, who's just standing there. But thanks to another earthquake... He misses his shot and only hits Snake in the leg. And Snake ends up, like, falling down to a lower level. And then Snake just falls out of the sewer in, like, a big crevasse that opened up. Like, yeah. Through the earthquake. A dumb thing. Yeah, just falls out of pipe, sewer pipe. And the the surfer guy's there. There's pipeline. Uh-huh. And he's like, I'm just waiting for the tsunami to come through because it's such awesome waves. Sure. Okay. I'm down with that. But why would he leave his car there? His car is just going to get plowed over by that tsunami. Maybe he doesn't care about it. Maybe it's like a... Also, it did kind of look like a personal car. Yeah, that was definitely his. Don't question this bad movie. <laughs> we, could, we would be here all day if we started to analyze. Yeah. So, he hands Snake a surfboard, and they decide to ride the tsunami. Ride that wave right in the town. And sure enough, they do. In what has to be one of my... The best part of this movie. You think this is the best part of the movie? It was my favorite part. Explain. Okay. So, this part is very dumb. I'm not going to offend it. I'm not going to say that it's necessarily good in like a movie sense. But, man... Is it so dumb and it it highlights everything that's wrong with this movie, even down to like the CGI and the acting and also just the plot convenience too? This is definitely where it peaks. This is the highest point yeah. of awful for this movie. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, because at this, this point in the movie, like I actually opened up my eyes all the way. And I remembered what it what it means to be alive just for this small little bit. <laughs> like it was it was uh, exhilarating, I'd say, at how bad it was. It is bad. The fact but, that he just rides up the wave and then jumps onto Steve Buscemi's car because he just happens to, he be just driving happens to be the car right next to the tsunami. Next to the tsunami. And they just surf on in, and he jumps off his surfboard. And they even had to, like, talk to each other on the wave, too. Yeah. And it's just casually, and he just jumps off, like, oh, see you later, snake. Just, yeah. Wee. Holy crap. If you've never seen this movie, oh, man. Don't watch it. <laughs> just look it up on YouTube. Just yeah. look at that part, and, yeah. and then you decide, is this a movie <laughs> that I want to invest the rest of my time with, knowing that... This is the best and also the worst part of the movie. Yeah. Not that there's not other bad parts. Yeah. And then, so he's on the, he gets in the back of the car. They have a struggle and Snake ends up taking over the car and he needs help getting to Cuervo's and they need a way to get inside. So they got to go see Hershey is the name of this character. They end up, Eddie ends up giving them directions on how to get there. And Hershey's hideout is in the Queen Mary, popular boat, luxury cruise ship of its time. I didn't know. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, that's also kind of like very like, hey, it's the 90s. Everybody knows the Queen Mary. But yeah, they get there and I can't figure out if this movie wants to handle this scenario well or not with Hershey. Yeah. I I don't understand. It seems very uh, random. Not necessary. Okay. So- Hershey's the only one who takes it seriously. Yeah. Which is good for that character to just, because Hershey is, well, trans or has completely went through the process yeah. of, from being a man to a woman. And at this point, who cares, right? But it turns out Snake Plissken knows Hershey when Hershey was a man as Carjack Malone. <laughs> and it... They were involved in that incident in Cleveland. It's pointless. That's what it is. Just could have just made a carjack. Or... And carjack's a woman. Yeah. Because Hershey, which problem with that name too, because it's not spelled like Hershey's chocolate or anything. It says H-E-R-S-H-E. Hershey? Oh. Hershey. Whatever. 
whatever, whatever movie, because oh, anyways, I'm not going to get into everything going on with that, but let's just say it's, it's problematic. It's convoluted for no reason. It doesn't need to be. And you know what? It's also a waste to have Pam Greer wasted in this role. Everybody loves Pam Greer. This is like during her comeback phase and like, I don't know, her voice is modulated and stuff and it's just, it's just bad. Everything about this character, just this, this whole dumb. sequence, not good. It's dumb. It's not good. But anyway, let's move on. Um, they end up making a deal because Snake's like, all right, I'll let you come with because they're sending a chopper to pick up Cuervo. So we're going to get there. We're going to get the device. We're going to... I'll take you along on the chopper, I guess, as long as you can get me in. Whatever. And before they leave, Eddie uses Hershey's nail polish to put a dot on the disc inside his remote because the only difference between his disc and the disc that controls all those satellites orbiting the Earth is one red dot. And I did notice a little continuity thing. The red dot he puts on there is way bigger than the other one. Yeah. It's also, you know, three-dimensional because it's nail polish. Like, it actually is, like, a little glob. Yeah, he puts a really huge glob on it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, maybe it could fool him. I don't know. For a second, yeah, enough. Uh, yeah. Whatever. I know. I mean, I don't mind the idea of, like, you know, like, hey, let's pull the old switcheroo or what do they call it on here? The Texas switch or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Then you've got Cuervo, who's at his hideout, which is apparently supposed to be, like, Disney World or Disneyland. I don't remember which one's in California. I, yeah, I don't. I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, they couldn't get the rights to it, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> but they made a couple of references because everybody, Snake and friends, are hang gliding in <laughs> super slow, having a conversation, and Eddie's making all these references about how they went, the place went bankrupt or something, and, like, drops a reference to Euro Disney. Ugh whatever and whatever movie at this point oh man this hang gliding is bad it doesn't look good surprising <laughs> i mean i'm willing to forgive some effects but at this point like why are why are you even doing this right now why are you doing this but yeah anyways so Quavo's at his thing and i i noticed that when he's making his speech everybody's all rooting for him why he's not taking all of you with him but then the crowd's cheering and they're all hoisting their guns up in the air and you can hear all these guns going off but there are no flashes from any of the guns no gun in the flash it's just gun sound effects played over i thought that that, that cracked me up it's dumb <laughs> So that his ride shows up, it's this bad CG stealth chopper, comes in and lands, and it's instantly sworn by Cuervo's goons, who like pull the dudes out of it, and that's when uh, Eddie uses himself as a diversion and hang glides in very slow, and like crashes, and everybody's like, whoa, what's going on over here? And he's like, whoa, it's just me, guys, it's just me. Whoa, I managed to survive, I got here. And then he's like, oh, look out behind you. And everybody just turns and starts shooting, which allows everybody to come in from behind them then. And they just casually, very slowly, so easy to shoot, but they're just shooting everybody. Hershey and her, her gang and Snake are just slowly floating around, <laughs> maybe sometimes up to two feet above somebody, I think. Yeah. And nobody is taking them out. Oh my gosh. Wow, it is, it's not good. And then um, <laughs> Snake ends up getting into a fight with Cuervo. And Cuervo does okay, but you know what the thing is, though, is like, Snake's been shot in the leg. He's sick. I mean, that is kind of a good way to even up the fight, I guess, because otherwise Snake, Snake just would just kill him. Because this guy's super cheesy. Yeah. Cuervo, we haven't even talked about him. He's just like some wannabe Che Guevara looking dude just i guess that's what they were going he for was interesting i guess i mean what are his motivations i guess he wants uh, the people free uh, which is cool he doesn't like world order he doesn't like being told like you can't do fun things but yeah the the texas switch happens uh snake eddie utopia hershey and some of her gang get in the chopper but wouldn't you know it some of the goons tie a rope to the chopper and to a car so they can't get away. But then, just like everything else in this movie, they're like, 
oh no, they can't get away. What's going to happen? They just shoot it. And then Hershey's like, they're like, oh, there's a rope. And Hershey's like, I'll shoot it. Boom. Problem shoots solved. The rope. Yeah, problem just instantly solved. No tension mm-hmm. whatsoever. Because it, the, the chopper is bulletproof too. Yeah, because of course it is. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't it be? And But then Quirville grabs this rocket launcher and Eddie happens to look out. He's like, yet again, far away. Uh-huh. He should be far away at this yeah. point. Acts like, oh crap, he's five feet away. So then he pulls out he pulls out a rifle, shoots Quirville in the chest, and he's like, hey, I got him. Uh-huh. But then Quirville shoots the rocket, he manages to get a shot off. Eddie goes, nope, jumps out of the chopper, and then the rocket hits the chopper, and the just the back seat fills with fire, <laughs> killing Hershey and a couple of her gang members are just instantly and unceremoniously killed while Utopia and Snake the two important characters are like ah geez oh this fire's hot yeah (laughs) that's about it they end up flying the chopper away (laughs) and I don't need this like scene of Eddie being like oh Snake plus good get back here yeah (laughs) whatever he can't hear you he's far away yet again you probably couldn't hear Snake either because you probably would just go but this is where the movie as if it wasn't just kind of like start and stop start and stop and off <laughs> this this whole end sequence is pretty choppy too like my notes are just like i think i took more notes on this than half the movie because <laughs> more happens in this half than anything or 10 minutes the flaming chopper they made it back to the mainland. Uh, Snake plants a remote on Utopia before she jumps out and the chopper crashes. We're like, oh no, Snake Pliskin died. No. He saved her. Nope, he's alive. And all these troops rush in and the president shows up and Commander Stacy Keach guy shows up and his sidekick and everybody's there. They just instantly show up and then Snake hobbles up to get his shot, but once you know it, the time runs out on his bracer, and he's like, oh. And they're like, yeah, I knew you'd be that dumb to believe it. It's the flu. Yep, we just gave you a fast-acting flu instead. And you can tell he's not happy about it. Because he's like, man, I would have. I'm sure he would have gladly completed the mission and just maybe used a little more time. Yeah. Maybe not get shot in the leg. I don't know. But anyway. I mean, you think that other guy got a time limit? The guy who was pinned to the wall and they were throwing knives at? I doubt that guy got a time limit. Probably not. Yeah, and then the troops just show up with Utopia right away. (laughs) They just just found her. (laughs) They just found her. And they're like, hey, she's got this on her. She's got this remote. And the president's like, well, you let her live, but you know what? We're just going to execute her anyway. Good thing they brought the electric chair set with them. Because they just brought it along, I guess? So that was, no, that's back at the station. No, well, unless he crashed near the station, but they're outside. Yeah, they crashed near the station. Yeah, because she's in the station. She's in the same execution chamber. Oh, I thought she was outside. No. It's really not... It's not good. It's, it's not, not edited well. It's not, yeah. It just seems like everybody's just hanging outside, which they are for the most part. The president goes on live TV. They just prop a background behind him. And he goes on the TV to activate the system because I guess, apparently, I mean, we didn't get into this earlier. Because, you know, show don't tell is apparently a bad idea. (laughs) Because uh, apparently, I guess Cuba is invading invading, and so is Mexico. Because that's not, that's reasonable. Sure, because why would they want to? There's no, there's no reason they should. Unless they're coming to free the U.S. citizens from this fascist society by the way if you live in cuba or mexico and you're able to save us (laughs) you may need your help yeah (laughs) yeah the president is going to use the remote to disable these invading armies or whatever just blast the countries just to teach them a lesson and just shut them down and send them to the stone ages i think they refer to it as but um turns out it's it's eddie's tour disc oh so the president, who's a real 
a hole, he says that they should just execute Snake on live TV because that's what the people would want. And so they just turn around and they go to execute him, but wouldn't you know it, he's a hologram. What? Yeah. Snake has the real device. Oh, man. But I like what he says here. He's like, I'll try not to do it as quiet. Shut down the third world. They lose. You win. Shut down America. You lose. They win. The more things change, the more they stay the same. And he just enters the code, which is 666. Uh-huh. And he shuts down everything on the planet out of spite. And then he just wanders off, finds an old pack of cigs with one grody brown one left. He lights it up with one of the matches that they gave him in the beginning. And he blows out the match, fade to black. And then he says, do you remember those line? No. Welcome to the human race. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Thank God. I will say this. I do like his decision at the end. It's like what he did in Escape from New York when he had the real tape the whole time and he just shreds it. Yeah, I feel like it was almost trying too hard to one-up that, though. Because, you yeah. know, that part where he's shredding the tape is really cool. Mm-hmm. He's walking, he's ripping it apart. And you're like, yeah, Snake, you do it. I just feel like this one, it's kind of like, I don't know. What did Canada do? People in Norway, are they're just like chilling they're not doing anything wrong <laughs> yeah just because america's a poop hole you just like now the rest of the world is gonna be terrible yeah you made things worse like if you shut down america cool that would i think that would have been a better ending you know what i kind of do too because it just would have like well you're gonna get what's coming to you yeah because you're awful uh-huh yeah, i don't know i mean the beginning i like the beginning a lot and i like just that little end bit is fine. Just that very end bit. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Like, CG was not a good idea for this movie, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Because from what I read, the effects studio who worked on this had no real experience with CG. Yeah, it was their first time. I mean, these are like sci-fi, sci-fi channel movie bad. It reminds me of, uh, what was the one sci-fi movie we watched with? I can't remember. It was a few episodes back. Oh, um... The Predator 3000. uh, Or Alien Alien 3000. Alien 3000. Yeah. Some of the effects were that bad. That was a good movie. Considering, like... I don't know, this movie didn't have the worst budget. Yeah, but... I mean, I would would rather watch Alien 3000 again. (laughs) Wow. But do you... Okay. You said wow, but do you remember that part where the alien jumps on the helicopter? That is see, now, see that's, now that's peak bad for Alien Three Thousand. Far more entertaining than surfing in this movie. All right, you got me there. Yeah, you got me there. Yeah, I can't argue with you on that. <laughs> but why not? Like some of the old school techniques they used for the effects in this, like composite shots and map paintings and stuff. Yeah, all that all stuff looks, is good. It all looks fine. Yeah, because that stuff has been done. That stuff had been done for decades by then. Yeah. And you know what? Even if I go, well, obviously that's been done before, you know, whatever. It still looks fine. Um, The sets and stuff in this movie are decent. The locations and everything. None of it really looks bad. All the practical stuff. Yeah. I have a question about this too. Like, who is this future America for? Because not everything lines up. I feel like they're trying to play it both ways with it. Where somebody, like, if you were right-wing, you could be like, oh, those liberals. And if you're left-wing, you can be like, oh, those stinking I think that's the conservatives. Point. I think that's the point. It's like the worst of both sides put together. Okay, because I was wondering about that, but, like, but, yeah. I mean, the one thing, like, yeah, I can see that, but, like, man, the 90s really had a fear of people eating. Like, they're going to take away our red meat. They're all going to make us... Eat vegetables all the time, which, whatever. Yeah. I prefer chicken strips anyway. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, I want me a good steak, but you know what? It's okay to eat vegetables too. Like, it's not the end of the world to not eat red meat once in a while. Mm-hmm. Not the worst thing, but man, there is a real fear in the 90s about it. There's so many movies like that have it in there. It's 
I don't know. Just turn the cannibalism. Exactly. Ooh, yeah, my counts. Your Snake Plissken, five. Five of them in this movie. I thought you were taller jokes. Two. <laughs> Saved by Earthquake. Two. Three if you count the tsunami. So, Brennan, do you have a favorite scene? A tsunami scene? Uh, we already we already went over uh, okay. why I love that part. Yeah, we already kind of went over mine, too. Yeah. The plastic surgery area. Uh-huh. Uh, all too short. I guess next would be how you say movie rating. So we have to say the word movie in a tone that describes how we rate this movie. And then after that, whether or not you would recommend it. Brennan, go. I don't know if I can say it because I think if I said it in the way that I want to say it, I would throw up. <laughs> like if I, the only way I could like legit do it is if I was vomiting while saying movie. So just imagine it. How about that viewers? Imagine, imagine out there, me, projectile vomiting. <gasps> Projectile vomiting Nutella and Pepsi while saying the word movie. You don't even want to try. No, I don't want to try because I know I wouldn't do it justice. So do you recommend it? No. Well, I'm going to say Escape from LA is a movie. I like the disappointment in that. Well, this movie is like eating a leftover sub sandwich. Yeah. It tastes okay and familiar at first, right? But after a while, it's, you're getting the soggy parts. <laughs> it's stale. Tastes a little funky. And by the end, you feel guilty and a little sick. I do not recommend. <laughs> that was a really. That was that was a really good. Very specific. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I have about Escape from LA. I'm sure you're done talking about this movie Dude, as well. Dude, this movie is. I mean, can I just say real quick here? Final thoughts. It's bad. It is. <laughs> now, do you understand why I didn't let you watch it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I did I not do. want Escape from New York soiled for you. Yet, I did it for this podcast, and I'm sorry. I guess this is what I get for picking Star Trek The Final Frontier, isn't it? I think we need to stop revenge moving movie each other. We need to stop trying to one-up each other for bad sequels and terrible movies. I mean, maybe a terrible movie, sure. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel... I'm hoping for your next one, you pick something a little more enjoyable. Okay. It doesn't have to be good. Yeah. We can make fun of it. Uh-huh. It's going to be great, but let's not get one that we just don't like. I don't have a lot of good things to say about this movie, and I like to say good things about movies. There's just nothing of it. Like... Not enough. It's hard to make jokes about it because there's just nothing there. I agree. It's more just laughing at, I can't believe this happened. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's like oh. a chore. <laughs> All right, dongles. Don't forget, visit T Public. Got a, got a link in the notes. Go over there. All of our old t-shirt designs are there too, but I highly recommend the new Space Demon one. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you know what? If you want to get a mask, since we're in a pandemic, that'd be a good idea too to wear they've one. They've got they've got masks. We've got masks. You, you should wear one. You should... For for every one that is ordered, they donate one, like a medical grade mask, to some foundation. Can't remember it off the top of my head, but they do. <laughs> All right. So feel free to contact us. What are your thoughts on this movie? You can reach us through the Dongle Den on Facebook. Link in the notes as well. Or you can send us an email, corruptedyouthpod at, at gmail g- dot d- d- com. com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, dongles, our listeners, and I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about all of this. But yeah, thanks for listening, and also big thanks to our fellow podcasters who help support the show. We love you guys. And Court Psyops from Cinema Psyops has been promoting the crud out of us lately on his show. So thanks, Court. We love you. Come back on the show again sometime. Yeah. We'd love to have you. 
And with that, hang in there, dongles. Hang in there. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Ha ha ha. Oh, we're so funny. We're loud now. Oh, uh, we're loud now. Uh, 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 Bush did 9-11. Oh, no. Dick Cheney started the Iraq War. Oh, my God. Let's see. We're Try it again now. Obama directed Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, my God. Who knew? Whoa. Whoa. Okay, we're going to have to try it again. <laughs> Like loud? Loud one? No, just normal. Oh, okay. Just normal talking. Normal talking. Hi, normal talking. Hi, we're normal talking. Hello, normal talking. Okay, normal talking. Poopy, poopy, butthole fart. Ooh, I like that. Doo doo. I like the sound of doo doo, butt muffin. Nothing beats the smell of doo doo in the morning. You said it, Brad.